this test panel has sore marks, love marks, just naturally from being on the vehicle. We're going to correct them. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to get an extra one to three gloss units more out of your correction. So we're starting off in what, uh, mid 80s here? Low to mid 80s. So this is a combination, and this combination was in the last video uh, a safe dimple pad, foam pad, and we're going to use the pop a cut with a uh, battery powered polisher, 15 millimeter throw. Um, we're going to have it on the between the third and the fourth speed setting, correction speed, and I'll show you in the direct sunlight here. This is a very, very warm day and I'll show you everything I'm using today can be used in a driveway setting. So if you're doing this for a living or if you're an enthusiast or a driveway detailer, this method will work for all. So what I'm sharing here today can be used if, the, if you're doing this for a living and the customer has it in the budget and you can do this extra step. Uh, or if you're an enthusiast working on your own car and you have the time for the extra step, this can certainly be implemented to squeeze an extra few gloss units out of that gloss meter. And if you have the eye for it, if you're going to a concours show, if you're going to a car show at all, and you want to show off the finish of your car at its best, these steps here will get you there. As you can see here, in uh, direct sunlight on a very warm day, I'm not rushing the process. I'm not cutting the uh, cycle time short. Uh, the open time for both of these steps, uh, very impressive, no dusting whatsoever, easy to wipe off as well. That should do it. Give me a second. I'm going to put the polisher down and grab you guys and bring you around so we have you in the direct sunlight today. That's better than any shop light. And uh, you'll be able to see no dusting on the edges there. You could have worked the product a little bit more another pass or two. Uh, so this is the cutting step. This step gets rid of the imperfections and uh, prepares you for the second step. Uh, wiping off the residue in the direct sunlight on a warm day just as easy. All right, we already have some huge improvements. The panel's not gonna get perfect. It's not on the car for a reason. There's some deep gouges and some dings and all sorts of imperfections and damage. Let's use a panel prep to remove any residue, just so I could show you no filling whatsoever during this process. And there we go, compared to the other side that has not been corrected, uh, most customers, most enthusiasts, most working on your own vehicle to uh, improve the look would be happy and could move on to the protection process from here. But we're going to go an extra step. Before we do, let's take some measurements and see where we stand when it comes to gloss. Some great strides compared to the other side where we started. Um, so now there is an extra step. You can squeeze an extra one to three gloss units out of that finish. And I'm gonna stick with Phoenix, fabulous uh, finish. You could go with Car Pro Reflect. There are many choices. Uh, but the waffle pad and the dimple pad here, um, the black one is an application pad just for wax, but it does have a purpose other than that. And also the fine finish pad, the waffle pad, I'm going to attach to the rotary and show you how to use both the rotary and the dual action polisher for 
Uh, some call it the jeweling stage or the burnishing stage, or it's just a last step for protection. During this stage, and because of the pads we're using, the correction fluids that we're using, and just the process itself, it will produce a little bit less heat than regular correction, the cutting stage, in other words. So you can turn the polisher up uh, a little bit. Uh, so I normally run it between the, fourth, the third and fourth speed setting. You can go between four and a half, uh, just below five, with the rotary and the dual action polisher during this step. Notice the smooth and deliberate movements of the polisher. It's not being thrown all over the place, flailing about. It's under control. I'm just steering it with my fingers here, guiding it back and forth. I'm letting the weight of the polisher, which is about five, five and a half pounds, uh, be the pressure down on the polisher. And that's all you need for this step. And what I choose for correction here, it's done for a reason with the pop -a cut and then the finish here, the fab finish. Again, you can see I'm not rushing and I'm still doing a rather large area in direct sunlight on a very warm day. Not worried whatsoever uh, about the polish drying out. The cycle time, the open time on these, just what I'm looking for here. And I always let the polisher come to rest before lifting it from the surface. And that doesn't matter if it's a rotary or dual action polisher. It will be easier for your polisher, the backing plate, the gears, and the pads if you do so. So bringing you around, I could show you, you could still do another pass or two. Take your time. There's no dusting. Wipes off easy. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll get out the panel prep. And then we are going to move to the dual action polisher stick with the fabulous finish but we'll use the uh, black foam pad this is a dimple pad and it's what you would call a wax application pad for mo more purposes um, you can use it to do this jeweling or burnishing step as well As mentioned earlier, there is room to turn the polisher up just a little bit between the four and a half and fifth speed setting. And like before, we're gonna let the polisher, the weight of the polisher do the work. You're just guiding it. Wipe off the residue, grab your favorite panel prep or make your own, and then it's time for the protection stage.
So in essence, what this extra step does really cleans up the surface. And you're getting gloss from making the surface of the panel or the paint or the single stage flatter and flatter and flatter. This extra step uh, achieves that just a little bit more. And again, really only for those that have an eye for it, those that have a budget and a time for it, but it does make a little bit of a difference. And we'll take some measurements again. You can get anywhere from one to three extra gloss units depending on the surface with this extra step. Then you're going to add your protection, wax coating sealant, and you'll be well into the triple digits when it comes to gloss.